Hello and welcome to the Too Many Bones Trove Chest Edition mod for Tabletop Simulator. I want to say that even though I've put this mod together, all of the content and game components are all intellectual property and owned by Chip Theory Games. Uh, but my main intention with this mod was to make the game as easy and accessible for people to play despite it being on Tabletop Simulator, and also to try to recreate the feeling of the game on your table when you're playing and uh, my first iteration of this made everything as accurate as possible with the mechanical movements of all the components because there's really not much to compare this game for when you're playing with it in your hands and you're rolling the chips around and you're moving your gear locks. But Tabletop Simulator isn't as user friendly. So I created lots of scripting to automate the mechanical movements and the manual dexterity items of the game. Hopefully this makes the mod much easier to use. Right now I'm just showing the off the trove chest, which is a 3D model of the actual trove chest, which is the deluxe storage system offered by Chip Theory Games. And then as a background, I've just put the boxes of all the different content in this particular mod. So I'm going to walk you through all the stuff on the table to make it a little bit easier to use. Up here in the left hand corner are the manuals for too many bones, too many bones under toe and too many bones splice and dice. If you hold the control button or the command button and mouse over, you can see these things zoomed in on your screen, or you can click on the upper left-hand corner of those PDFs and pin them to your screen. And again, here are some references that are extremely useful and necessary while you play the game. Again, you can command or control click on them to zoom in on them. Now, when you're ready to start the game, hit the white start game setup button and you'll be given a list of selecting your gear locks and your tyrants. Now, as of this time, all of the gear locks available and all of the content, including Too Many Bones Unbreakable, is included in the mod. Uh, the tyrants, however, are just covering all the tyrants up to and before the Unbreakable content releases. Uh, you can use the right and left arrow buttons to scroll through the lists of tyrants and gear locks. There's also a random button if you prefer to have a little bit of variety by choosing randomized tyrants or gear locks. Now again, you can use your control or command button to highlight over these and zoom in on the content to get a better view of what you might be getting into before you start your game. Now, depending on how much space you like to have on your table, there is this gear lock mat spacing, which either puts the gear lock mats as close together as possible or spreads them out to give you more space in between each gear lock mat when you're playing on the table. And there's an additional game mode called Nobulous Apprentice Program. I'll cover that later. Once you've selected your gear locks and your tyrants, hit the confirm selection. And now you're presented with all of the options of what you can add to the game. You can mix or match content from expansions into your current game, if it's compatible, of course. The areas you can choose from are the baddies, the starting encounters, which is the day one through three or the day one through two, depending on which base game you're playing, the loot, and if there's any additional items from promotional materials or content that may or may not have been released, you can choose it in the extras section. Uh, just note that as of now, the content from the unbreakable and beyond stage of content is not yet in the mod. Something that might be helpful as you navigate these menus is that if you hover over some of these buttons, there are tooltip text that will help to tell you what is in that particular selection. Uh, I also do my best to try to prevent combinations that are not supported from being selectable. For example, in starting encounters, if you're playing with Undertow, you really can't add the base game starting encounters since they're made for a three day starting section instead of two like Undertow. But generally, feel free to add or not add components from additional games if you want to add variety or additional challenge. Once you're ready, hit the confirm selection to continue. Now you can see one of the few benefits that Tabletop Simulator brings to the game is that the setup is automated for you. I'll play this first one at normal speed, but if we go through more of these in this particular YouTube video, I'm going to just speed them up. However, the 
board is set up based on all the selections you've provided. The components are randomized, shuffled, placed on the table where they're needed, and are ready for you to use as soon as it's finished. Before we go further into the game, I want to go over more menu options. You can play Too Many Bones against a single tyrant, the Undertow campaign, the Age of Tyranny campaign, or in the Automaton of Shale campaign. These are different modes in which you can face a single tyrant or a series of them, depending on your preferences. Here I'm selecting the Undertow campaign, which Canonically has you fight Barnacle first, he's one of the easiest tyrants in the Undertow game section, with Nobulus at the end. So right now you get to pick this tyrant you want to fight in the middle. You could, however, change it to a custom tyrant layout where you can choose from any of the tyrants in any of the order between the Undertow and the Too Many Bones base game set. Just click on the buttons until you cycle through to the tyrant you want, and when you're ready hit confirm to continue. Now, since you're going to fight three tyrants in a row, you're not going to stop and reset your gear lock, and you're going to continue from your current spot on the adventure mat and with the current set of training points, progress points you have. So to accomplish this, once you're finished beating the current tyrant, which as you can see here needs five progress points to challenge, hit that red button and it will clean up the board and set up the next tyrant. For Undertow, you're only going to have an additional three progress points needed before you can face them. And once you get to that point and successfully beat the Tyrant, hit that red button again, and it will clean and set up the table for the final leg of the Undertow campaign. The Age of Tyranny campaign is slightly different. You're actually going to reset your gear lock in between each of the Tyrants, and you're going to face the seven original Tyrants from the base Too Many Bones game. As you progress, your gear lock is going to be battered and beaten and may receive scars that block or hinder certain skills as you fight through these seven tyrants. When you start, you don't get to pick your first tyrant as it's randomized. However, the Age of Tyranny campaign has a series of cards and epilogues for each of the tyrants. And once the game has set up the table, you can see this first Age of Tyranny card here telling you what you can start with who you're fighting, how many progress points are needed, and information about your leg of the journey in that campaign card. There's a total of 10 Age of Tyranny campaign cards, but only seven are randomized and chosen for this campaign. And as you can see, the second tyrant is going to be another randomized tyrant. And that tyrant card tells you how many scars you need to add to your gear lock, if you get to carry any loot or training points, and any special situations in this next leg of your campaign. There is a tracking mat for the Age of Tyranny which you can put all of your defeated tyrants. You also have your scars and your boons cards as well as the actual scar tokens to add to your gear lock mat. So as directed if you need to add a scar to your gear lock take the, the token and add it where the card directs you to. These scars prevent you from using those skills or backup plans or active slots or lock slots and a whole number of other things. You can see that this third tyrant is selectable. So toggle on that button until you find the tyrant you want to face. Read your campaign card, view your tyrant card for any additional scars and carry over loot or skill dice and then move on and fight the third tyrant. You'll repeat this process for each tyrant until either you defeat all seven tyrants or you've been battered and broken so much that you cannot defeat your current tyrant. Also note that there's some additional dice used by Age of Tyranny, either by the Scar or Boon cards. Those are located right up here. The final campaign mode currently is Automaton of Shale. You can start that either by selecting the Tyrant Automaton of Shale or in the game type selection menu you can switch to Automaton of Shale. This is a fantastic pop-up book made by the people at Chip Theory Games. It's a pleasure to play through and I can't quite capture the grandeur of the actual pop-up book with all of its moving parts so you get a stripped down version here in this mod. But the mod will set up the table for you. 
And as you play through the automatana shell, you're going to flip pages and perform encounters based on what you see going on in that page. And the flavor text for each page is available as a tooltip text on that button there. So to play this game, you're going to bring out the next encounter, read through and play it, finish the event, and move on to the next encounter. Once you've processed all the encounters on that page, you click to the next page, which will load out the next set of encounters. There may be additional baddies or loot that get also deployed as you play through. You will continue doing the same process, finishing all of the encounters on that particular page, move on to the next page, beating the encounters, until you reach the tyrant. Here you can see the automaton of shale themselves with their tyrant chip and everything you need to play. In Too Many Bones, Splice and Dice, there's actually a new mode that lets you build your own tyrant. This is called the Build a Tyrant mode, and you can select this by selecting the Build a Tyrant Tyrant. Once you do this, select your gear locks and confirm your selection. Now, in order to find out what body types your tyrant has and how long you're going to play, there's a slight little mini game here that you're going to use to set up and determine the starting characteristics of your tyrant. The instructions for this are included in the Splice and Dice manual that you can view through and read to learn how to play. Uh, in a nutshell, you're going to pull a few body chips here and you're going to do some stuff with them to figure out which of the body types of the types you've pulled are going to be present for this body. Select them in the body types menu below. I'm just selecting them at random. You also have the ability to choose how long or you want to play. This is going to be determined by the amount of days your tyrant has as well as which base game content you want to use for your tyrant. Once you've selected all of that, the setup of the game is going to be exactly as it was before. As you play through encounters in this build a tyrant mode, you're going to use defeated baddies in that splice mat up to the top. And using the instructions found in the book, you're going to be adding characteristics from those defeated baddies to your tyrant. So by the end of this, your tyrant is a horrifying mashup of all of the different characteristics that you've faced so far. Too Many Bones Splice and Dice has another game mode called the Nobulus Apprentice Program. This is a departure from the Too Many Bones tactical style game in that it is a card driven game. You play as beleaguered interns in Nobulus's horror factory organization. To set up this game mode, select which base game baddies you want to include in your game experience, then hit confirm. This sets up the table and gets you ready for your game. You'll try to accomplish tasks provided to you, all the while building a tyrant that you could end up using in the actual base game if you wanted to, in the same way that you do with build the tyrant mode. Depending on your selection of tyrant or gear locks in your initial selection, you may have access to some additional items to play with in your game. In this case, I'm showing the example of Nom and Riffle. In the extra section, you can see that there's Trollin' for Fools, which is a nom extra item. Riffle's Joker, of course, is an additional two cards that Riffle can use when they are playing. There's also an expansion, a mini expansion called Gearlock Child, as well as some additional loot that's in some items that you can get during the promotional sale done during Black Friday, or when you complete certain special objectives hidden in the game. To make life easier in Tabletop Simulator, I've added additional scripting to a number of the gear locks. I want to cover those now. The first set is the Lab Rats, which are actually four smaller gear lock mats rather than the larger mat you get with the other gear locks. These gear locks fight on the battle mat one at a time, depending on who's active and who's not. 
you can see that the all four on this table, whereas two of them are face down and two of them face up, because you only start with two of these lab rats active. You can switch them in and out by clicking on the tag in button, which switches the active gear lock with the one that you've selected. But maybe you want to start your game with a different set of two gear locks from the lab rat pack. You can use the tag in and the join party buttons to move these around to get the two that you want to start with active. Or as you acquire more gear locks over the course of your game, you can tag in and out different of the lab rats to the battle mat and continue your playthrough. Each lab rat has their backup plan on their car, which follows their mat as they play across the game. The health trackers for the lab rats works the same as all of the other gear locks. You can increment or decrement the health either from the tracker near the backup plan or on the chip stack itself. Dart is another gear lock that has an interesting mechanic. Dart has the ability to go dangerous. Once you get enough bones in your backup plan, you can flip the whole mat over going dangerous and that gives you an extra game mode where you can rampage around the battle mat doing damage to baddies and relocating yourself. And as you take each of these steps, you'll remove one of your bones until you use them all up and have to flip back to your normal side. Use the button on the right hand side to flip to dangerous start and back. Dart also has a trusty companion called Board. Board is a pigadillo that you can mount on and ride around the battle mat. You have a combined health pool, essentially, but in Tabletop Simulator, it's hard to actually get your chip off of the board stack of chips. So I've added in scripting so that whenever Dart is on board, you'll have an extra button called Dismount. When you click on it, it'll remove Dart and let you keep playing your game. Tink is a gear lock that lets you build mechs and put them out on the battle mat to do various items. And Tink has two skill die for building these mechs. And you're going to roll it, and the arrow on the build die lets you select attachments to add to your bot. Unfortunately, Tabletop Simulator doesn't make it very easy to rotate that die in the axes that you need to. So I've added two green buttons that let you do that. To the left and the right of that slot, you can see the arrows, which will let you rotate that die in the value that you want to select the attachments needed for your bots. Static has an interesting skill die called the Knuckle Zapper. This is a counter die that starts at zero, but can be incremented by using your backup plan or a fortunate discovery. The max value of this die is going to be five. Knuckle Zapper are chips that come with static and can be used on the battle mat against baddies. You take your Knuckle Zapper die and decrement it and however many points you decrease that die by allows you to place the knuckle zapper chip on a baddie that many spots up from the bottom of their health stack. So if you decrease the die by five max value you'll put that knuckle zapper in five spots up from the bottom on the baddie. Static has a five bones backup plan called overclock and that's why you can see there's a new button present called overclock. If static were to use that backup plan item the knuckle zapper chip is removed from the baddie's health stack and a stun die is applied to the baddie. And as long as the baddie has the knuckle zapper chip in their health stack, they're considered electrified. Their attack die will be decreased by one, and whenever they receive damage, any adjacent baddies are going to receive one damage in electrical damage. Just keep in mind that the knuckle zapper chip can only be added to a baddie's health stack up to the amount of health that that baddie has. So if you were to select something larger, it's only going to go up to the highest chip available. Carcass has some interesting mechanics that I've scripted up in Tabletop Simulator. One of the things that he can do is he can take defeated baddies and keep them on meat hooks where he can use them in recipes or for other purposes. In order to track this, defeated baddies in your encounter need to not go to the overall defeated stack. So instead, when playing with Carcass and a baddie is defeated, they'll go to an encounter defeated stack, which you can see over here on the left. 
as you defeat baddies, they'll keep going over here, giving Carcass the option of choosing them to go on meat hooks. Once you've finished an encounter and all the baddies have been defeated, you can easily return these baddies to the discard pile by clicking on the Battle Over button. This takes them and puts them in the appropriate discard pile. Carcass has another interesting skill die called Troll Call. Once you set up the battle mat with the baddies, but before the gear locks have come in, Carcass can use his Troll Call die to bring three baddies from the active stack. You roll the die to see which baddie types you can bring in, and you can bring in baddies from that value or below. As you can see, I've added in tooltip text on the skill die to teach you how to use it. When you're ready to use it, roll to see which baddie types you can bring in. And in this example, I rolled one, so I can bring in three one-point baddies from the active stack. And once you've done that, take a look at them. You have the option of taking one of these new baddies and replacing one of the already deployed one-point baddies with the chip that you pick. Carcass has two options with the baddies he's pulled from the active stack. He can either take that chip and put it to the bottom of the active stack, or if he wants to, he can replace one of the deployed baddies of the same value with the baddie he's pulled from the active stack. To do this, right-click on the chip and choose the option you want. Once you've replaced a baddie on the deployed baddies, the other two need to be sent to the bottom of the active stack. Right click and choose send to bottom. Riffle is an interesting gear lock in that they have a deck of cards that they use in their gameplay. I'm using Tabletop Simulator's card management to take care of this. But in order to do that, you need to make sure that you are on a color that's actually at the table. So make sure you set your player color to one of the four that are assigned to the table. And once you do, you can click on these take buttons to take cards into your hand. There's also an easy button for shuffling the deck. So in this case, I need to start off with five total. So I'll take three and I'll take two. And now in Tabletop Simulator, I have these cards in my hand, and regardless of the angle I'm viewing the table at, I can still see and access these cards. If you want to use one, just drag it from your hand zone to your gear lock mat, wherever you want to play them. And when you need more, just pull them back into your hand zone. Certain backup plan items allow Riffle to bring in more cards from their discard pile. Just drag them in, shuffle, and use as normal. There are some convenience functions built into the mod to track health. In this case, I'm showing you the gear lock health. And at the gear lock mat in the upper right hand corner, there's a tracker showing you the current health. And you can either increase or decrease the health either by clicking on the buttons over the gear lock chip or by right clicking and left clicking in that tracker in the upper right hand corner. The gear lock health is determined by their health plus however many skill die you've added to it to increase the health. And when you add a die to their health die, the maximum overall health is automatically incremented and then it's up to you to increase to max value. When playing on the battle mat, you can track the health of the gear lock either by using the buttons over the chip stack or from the gear lock's mat, whichever is more convenient for you. Also note that when you reach zero health, your gear lock's chip will automatically be returned to your gear lock mat, and there's a new button called Rest and Recover. If you use that option after an encounter, the scripting will automatically increase your health back up to max. Any companions the gear lock might have are going to be managed and tracked the same way, except a gear lock's companion doesn't have a set max health, so you'll need to set the health based on whatever die is currently active for that companion. If you ever get six bones, you can 
use them to upgrade your gear lock to an 8 plus 1. To do this, I've got a button on the right-hand side that is called an 8 plus 1, and it will flip your gear lock's chip to the an 8 plus 1 side. Depending on how you play Tabletop Simulator and the angle you like to view the board game at, it may be difficult to see the health checking information above the chips. To make things easier, I've added in angle selectors of 0 degrees, 45 degrees, and 90 degrees. This will change the angle at which the health checking information is displayed, making it easier for you to see at your preferred angle. One feature that was requested was the ability to clean up a gear lock skill die when they're finished with an encounter. So there's this return skill die button and any of the dice in the exhausted skill die section will be automatically returned to their correct spot in the gear locks mat. There's also attack and defense die that you can reset using the reset button at the top. Some players like to delete these dice when they're finished with them and by clicking on this reset die it'll easily refresh these with new versions of them. If you happen to have had any of those dice in your backup plan, they're protected from this reset until they're removed from those slots. There's also some dice rollers for people who prefer to roll the dice using this automatic method. You can select the amount of dice you want to roll, and by clicking on the number it will roll them. These dice rollers will automatically clean up the dice rolled in the previous roll, unless you've pulled them off and used them as bones in your backup plan, in which case they won't get refreshed when you reset and reroll from the dice roller. However, if you're using the return skill die option, in addition to returning all of the skill dice for the gear lock, it'll clean up any of the automatically rolled dice, regardless of where they are. There's two trackers under the adventure mat to help you keep track of the progress points and the days. You can use the chip just like in the actual physical game by clicking on the button on the chip to increase it by one day. You can also right click or left click on the progress point or day tracker to increment and decrement those as well. The progress point tracker is also tied into the bead on the adventure mat and by changing the value it'll automatically set that bead at the correct spot on the adventure mat. Scripting has been added to make it easy to set up the BQ and the baddies on the battle mat. By clicking on the BQ setup button It'll automatically display the correct BQ value based on the amount of gear locks and the day. In this case, two gear locks on the first day means your BQ would be just two. By clicking on the red button underneath it, it builds the BQ. After that, clicking on the red button again will automatically set up those baddies on the battle mat in the correct spots. As you can see on the baddie chip, this baddie has an initiative of 6, and I've automatically set the value of the initiative tracking die for that lane to the correct value, but it'll be up to you to add them in manually to the initiative tr tracking slot on the battle mat. When the baddie's health hits 0, the chips and the die are automatically cleaned up and returned to their correct spots. Depending on encounter setup or gear lock consumables or skills, you might need to increase or decrease the actual BQ before you create it. There's plus or minus buttons here that let you set the value you need for your encounter before you start deploying to the battle map. While you can manage a baddie's health by clicking on the plus and minus buttons, if you have a gear lock that's done an especially brutal attack, it gets tedious clicking down until they reach zero. Instead, you can right-click on the baddie stack and choose the Reset All button. This will automatically destroy the baddie and reset everything back to its default state. Sometimes an encounter needs you to add a specific baddie to the BQ. So, for this example, let's say we have a BQ of 5 and I need to add a 1 point baddie. I can start off by building the baddie queue, and then at any point after I've built the baddie queue, I can go into the bags and find the baddie I need and just add it to the top or the bottom depending on the encounter as needed. And once you've modified the BQ based on your encounter, hit the deploy and it'll deploy whatever you've built to the battle map. 
Sometimes you want to construct your own BQ instead of having it automatically created. You can do this just by adding the batty chips in the right order based on however you want to do it. Once you've done that, then hit the BQ setup button and it'll recognize you're manually setting up the BQ and then hit setup battle map. It will deploy your built BQ as you've set it up. Too Many Bones Undertow added two new types of baddies, three points called Krellen or Mech. Depending on what side of the battle mat you're playing on, you're going to either need to add or include mech type baddies or Krellen type baddies. In Undertow, you'll have additional options in the BQ setup for selecting your type, Krellen or Mech. You also have the option of adding baddie types or including baddie types. Set the Krellen or Mech quantity, then build your BQ as normal. Sometimes you've been thoroughly beaten by the baddies on the battle mat, and instead of manually decrementing all of their health to zero and cleaning it up, I've added a full party wipe button. When you use this, it'll automatically clean up all the baddies on the battle mat and return them back to the starting position. Note that baddies that are returned to the stack in this way go to the bottom of the active stack rather than the discard pile because you haven't actually defeated them. If you want to try your hand at the Breakkeeper Challenge, I've scripted that in the mod to make things easier. Once you have the Breakkeeper chip, place it on the BQ setup spot. Once you've read through the instructions, deploy to the battle mat and give it a try. If you want even more fine-tuned control over setting up baddies on the battle mat, you can use this baddie setup button on the left-hand side near the discard piles. Maybe you accidentally deleted the baddie stack on the battle mat and want to replace just that one. Place the chip on the button here and choose from the options to deploy it to the battle mat. This setup button also works with the mech or krellen baddie chips. Those require an additional spot information telling it which of the mech or krellen spots to come out to. You can either roll the six sided die and pick the correct spot, or if that's not selected, the mod will automatically pick one for you. Some baddies in Too Many Bones have an extra baddie icon in the lower right hand corner, one skull or two skull. The extra baddie option is going to bring in one or two extra baddies, one rank below the baddie chip that it's currently on. This mod will automatically handle adding these extra baddies for you. An important function that can be done during the recovery phase is scouting. This is critical to help your gearlock survive some of those tougher baddies. The baddie chip stacks have a scout button on them that allow you to easily accomplish this function. Clicking on the scout button will bring the first unscouted baddie from the baddie stack that you selected to the battle mat for review. You have two options with a scouted baddie, either add it to the top of the baddie stack or to the bottom. If you choose to send it to the top of the stack, it'll go to the bottom of the already scouted baddies that you've previously sent to the top because the order is retained. If you select the bottom, it just goes to the bottom. Now, 
What you've already scouted and sent to the top is known information. If you want to see what you've already scouted, click on the See Scouted button and you can see the baddies you've scouted and sent to the top and the order in which they are set to come out. Depending on how well you roll with your scouting die, you can scout 20, 5 point and 1 point baddies and you can do them all at once if you want, if you have many people playing. That lets you choose which one you want to return to the top or the bottom based on everyone's scouting attempt. Thank you for watching the video and I hope you enjoy the mod. If you have any questions, comments, critiques, feedback, or new feature requests, just let me know. I'll be happy to look into it and see what I can do.